I'm Phil McKinney, and we're here at CES 2025 here in Las Vegas, the largest trade show in the world. This is actually a great show to come to, to see where technology is at and where it's going, but also to see and understand the trends. The show's been going on for many years. This is CES number 20 for me, and around every corner you turn, you're always surprised at looking at the new things that are being displayed here. One of the things that we've seen here at the show is the growing importance of networks, the explosion of IoT devices, the explosion of online experiences is really driving this expanded use of networks in ways that we can't even predict of what it will look like years in the future on the networks. Some of the interesting technologies we've seen here at CES includes autonomous driving, you know, Waymo and those kinds of things. Where that has a, an impact on the network is not so much the network from the standpoint of wallets and mobile, but what happens at night when it comes into customers' homes and now it synchronizes with the network and it transmits huge amount of data. In discussions while here at CES, they actually are anticipating an explosion in size in the amount and the frequency of that data needing to be transmitted. The other is IoT, the explosion of the number of devices in the homes. You know, we've gone from three, four, five devices to 15 devices to 30 devices, everything from, you know, the thermostats and security, things that we've seen uh, up to this point, but devices that we may not even think about needing a network connection, the manufacturers here are building them in so that they can do a better job of monitoring, updating, and ensuring a great experience for their customers. All those devices have a dependency on being able to be monitored remotely and therefore will have and drive an impact to the network. One area that we've seen an explosion in is these overlay networks. Companies that are building product services and experiences that actually have a dependency on an underlying network. Here at CES, we saw one example where someone was using an overlay network to basically resell unused capacity off of someone's 5G network to somebody that was nearby. So basically acting as a 5G hotspot, they could offer their unused capacity, put a price to that, and have other people use that unused capacity it's an interesting challenge. We've recently published a blog post on that at Cable Labs, specifically focused on the security issues of these overlay networks that are emerging. And it should be something we as an industry should keep our eye on. One area here at CES that we've seen significant expansion in is in healthcare. One company that we looked at specifically was focused on delivering remote health. One out of every 10 Americans live in a care desert. Care deserts defined where they have no doctor and no hospital within two hours. And these are literally self-contained booths that allow them to connect to a doctor, having stethoscopes, scales, blood pressure monitoring, all kinds of devices built into this that allows for good, complete, remote healthcare for those people who don't have access to the normal healthcare environment. What's interesting is this ties back to the Near Future film that Cable Labs produced. Near Future film number two talks about how are we gonna provide remote healthcare such that people can feel that independent life while also feeling like they're being served and supported uh, with healthcare challenges that naturally occur as we age. And we saw a whole variety of technologies. AARP had a huge boost here with a number of partners all highlighting these kinds of technologies. The opportunity for us as an industry is that network, providing those network services so that people can connect wherever they're at. And here at CES, you could not avoid seeing, talking, experience artificial intelligence. What was interesting was also that many of the companies got very creative on marketing and branding their work around AI, which could be something that allows somebody to stand out and get out of the herd of overall AI. If you go back to 2015, 16, 2017, I'm famously on the record as saying that AI was being way overhyped. So with the hype curve, you get the, the big upfront hype, everybody hops on it. Then you end up with the trough of disillusionment where everybody says, well, it's not living up to the hype. What we're seeing now is we're coming out of that trough of disillusionment and we're seeing real world applications that are having significant and meaningful impact in people's lives. One of the very interesting trends we saw here at CES this year 
was really the de-emphasis of the raw technology, chips and processors, et cetera, and much more of an emphasis on the experience. How all of these pieces come together from the standpoint of how users are going to experience it and how does it weave in to our day-to-day -day lives. It's more about integrating these technologies to create new, unique, and differentiated experiences. As we move away from network speeds, experience is really where the focus is at. Some of the really fun technologies and products and services we saw this year is this explosion in smart glasses. So we've seen them everything from uh, automatic translation where you put the glasses on, it listens and then in your ear whispers it in whatever language you want. We've seen them with auto closed captioning. Now we've seen that in movie theaters and et cetera, but they're showing glasses here that actually work out in the open. And we've seen a variety of those kinds of technologies, but again, it's not about the technology, it's about the experience. How do you integrate it? What we've seen a lot of here is business model innovation. How do you change the economic structure? How do you create the revenue stream flows with partnerships? This year CES does feel a little different. Um, it's a little bit smaller than last year, but as CES has gone through its transitions over the many years, the emphasis changes. In this case, this year's show, less about technology, much more about business models. What is underlying though, with all of these companies that are showing here at CES, is their interest, passion, and need for the broadband network, and a lot of interest in seeing where that can go. Thank you for taking the time to watch the video. It's been a great show. Hopefully you found the summary and look at what we saw here at the show helpful to you as you make your decisions and your priorities.